All right, so we're on to specific deterrents in chapter 15. And specific deterrents revolves around punishment and methods for preventing convicted criminals from committing further crimes. The incarceration is the most punishment um, that is looked at. All right. Studies of imprisonment. All right. There is a 50% higher recidiv high recidivism rate for those that are imprisoned already. And there is no consistent relationship between time served and the outcome of parole. So very interesting. All right. Here is a video which you can go watch. I'm not going to do it right now, but it's now, on look at how we debating who commit crimes um, in the United reforms States, to boost rehabilitation, lower Jeffrey recidivism. So you can go watch that if you want. It's Across very, very interesting. Is... All right. So the collective selective. So with incapacitation, you have the collective, which means everyone is the same. And then you have the selective, which is subject only high risk offenders to intervention. So which is better is the question. So an evaluation rests on a number of assumptions concerning criminal activity. Number one, individuals commit same base rate of offenses every year. There is a constant rate of offending over time. An individual's criminal career is not simply put on hold while incapacitated, and an incapacitated individual is not replaced by another offender. There are varying results of these studies. First of all, the studies assume a constant rate of crime across all offenders. The actual level of offending probably does vary greatly from individual to individual. We're humans. We're going to be different. We're going to... Um, engage in different criminal activity depending on our circumstances at the time. And the criminal justice system policies may result in varying incapacitation rates. The cost of incapacitation in terms of the number of who need to be incarcerated and the dollar costs. So there was a study of Greenwood um, and it had an emphasis on the identification of offenders who were high risk um, they had selective incapacitation predictive scale idea of reducing the time served by low and medium risk inmates and increasing the terms for high risk offenders. Greenwood claimed that you can reduce robbery by 15% while lowering the California prison population by 5%. Wow, that sounds amazing, right? And they had a collective incapacitation approach that would require a 25% increase in the prison population, um, so, and there was severe criticism of those results. All right, electronic monitoring. So those generally the most seen is the ankle bracelet. So it's incapac incapacitation without the use of a prison, basically. So you use home confinement. They are confined to a home by an electronic monitoring device. Um, it's a response to overcrowding, legal challenges, and the rising crime. And it's also a solution to the call for increased supervision and the protection of society when offenders are released into the community. All right, here's another video, and this is on flaws Colorado revealed in electronic Evan monitoring. So this is only two minutes, but this is earlier. really interesting. So please go take a look again um, at this. Um, Evil's dramatic shooting so I'll let you, I'll show it for a couple of, survived, for a minute. Has renewed focus on the effectiveness of electronic monitoring devices. Like any other system, nothing's foolproof. It took five days for Colorado parole officers to respond to an alert that Ebel cut off the bracelet. An AP review found that, like in Colorado, parole offices nationwide. So basically, are that was showing um, a person that was under electronic monitoring at the house um, that was pulled over by an officer, and the officer was shot and killed. So anyhow, um, initial forms of electronic monitoring involve the use of radio frequency and RF transmitters, active or continuous signaling. So that means that they're, they only um, send out a GPS signal ever so often or they actively send it out. Um, and the most recent innovation, there's new GPS technology also that uses satellites to locate a person and monitor that person's movements. All right, the extents of the use steadily increased um, 
its initial use in New Mexico in 1983, and more than 18 countries utilize it. Estimated that in 2009, there were almost 110,000 offenders on some type of electronic monitoring system or GPS tracking. And they estimate the yearly caseload of more than 25,000 in European countries not intended to be used with all offenders and do not wish to be seen as a form of net widening. All right, impact on offending and technical violations. So there's little research. It's generally favorable results in terms of both technical violations and further offending. And there is an impact on overcrowding. Obviously, if you use electronic monitors, it obviously has an effect on the prison population. There are issues and concerns such as round the clock monitoring increases personnel um, because you've got to still monitor the electronic monitors. Um, it does um, extend the reach of the criminal justice system and may place the public at greater risk because the offenders still can leave. It just sends a notification out if they leave, but they still can leave, as you saw with the video of whether the officer was shot and killed. All right, that ends um, chapter 15, and we will see you for the next chapter.